Now, another approach for creating custom tags and creating flexibility for the JSP developer is relatively new in the JSP specification, and it allows the JSP developer with the JSP skills to write what's called tag files using the JSP technology. So with this approach, a tag is actually developed using the JSP technology. There's no need to write any Java code. This is more suited to the JSP developer. It is ideal for tags that need to output complex HTML because complex HTML is what UI developers do best. There are some rules. A tag file must have a .tag extension. It can be stored inside the webinf slash tags folder of the application itself or you could package several tag files in a jar file and add the jar file to the lib folder of webinf for the web application. The name of the tag is the same as the tag file without the file extension, which must be dot tag. For example, if you wanted to create a custom tag called address, the name of the file would be address dot tag. Like a JSP file that gets compiled into a servlet, a tag file gets compiled into a tag class at runtime. So a very simple example of a very simple tag, in fact, a tag file called simple.tag, would look like this. It's simply a JSP file with JSP uh, tags, percent at, and then the tag directive attribute, name, required, and then whatever behavior we want this tag to do, but written in JSP syntax. So in this case, the message is and some JSP expression. Then outside of this tag class, use the tag in a JSP just like you would any other tag, except for uh, the tag lib directive. Some extra steps need to be taken in the tag lib directive. Instead of using URI, we see here a reference to tag dir, the tag dir attribute, and of course it's pointing to the folder where tag directories might be found. Prefix is used the same way, and then we begin using the um, tag, the syntax for actually using the tag from the simple.tag file. Notice that the name of the file is the name of the tag, and the attribute name is message, and we're setting the attribute message to be hello world. Optionally, inside the tag file, you can add additional features using the tag directive to configure the tag. It serves the exact same purpose as what we saw with the tag element in the TLD file. So for example, the tag element in a tag file, we set the display name attribute, we can set the body content attribute. This is just exactly the same as what we saw in the TLD file, which is normally constructed by the Java developer, but now we're looking at letting the JSP developer extend their skills to provide the configuration and necessary information to extend the UI. So this is the same thing, but written in JSP syntax with JSP tags. Some of the attributes that are supported for the tag directive, we already see display name and body content, of course, same as in the tag library descriptor. There's also an import attribute used to uh, do a Java import. Is el ignored works with the expression language. If it's set to false, then any expression language expression evaluation is disabled. The default is to set this to true. In creating a tag file, there's also an attribute directive. The attribute directive is used for the purpose of setting attributes, just as you would in a TLD file. For example, the attribute directive, you set the name, you set whether or not it's required, you set various attributes. Attributes that are supported by the attribute directive are named the same way as what we've seen in the TLD file. For example, name required, runtime expression value, and for example, fragment. 
working with variables from a tag file. This is for a JSP developer, again, that wants to write custom tags. JSP variables, in other words, objects that are stored in the page scope that are defined before a tag file gets executed, these can be easily accessed using an expression language expression. For example, the message is message, and we're looking at the expression language expression here. A tag file can define new variables, usually done in order to share data with other tags in the rest of the page. Remember, we've got one tag, one tag file. If multiple tags are used from the same directory and we want to share data across variables, this is one of the ways to do it. In order to do this, we use the variable directive. For example, variable, uh, the name given, the variable class. Uh, this is a good example of using Java Bean, for example. Attributes supported by the variable directive are name given and variable class, the data type. By default, if you don't specify this, the data type is considered to be string. Now, working with fragment attributes in a tag file. The fragment attributes, again, allow the user of a tag, and a user of a tag is the JSP developer. It allows the user of a tag to supply their own markup and customize rendering, which is or should be their specialty. In order to declare an attribute to be a fragment, you use the attribute tag and you set the fragment attribute of the attribute tag to be true. Then invoke the fragment when it comes time to render it by calling the JSP invoke method and specifying the name of the fragment. The user of the tag, again, the JSP developer, supplies the fragment attribute using the JSP attribute just as we saw um, when we were defining our tags using TLD. So the JSP code doesn't really change in how they work with these tags. It's how the tags are defined that is changed because the syntax, the language, we're using tag files instead of Java files and TLD files. If you're going to work with tag files, you need to know how to package them, even though they're written in JSP code. You have two choices. Standalone, in other words, we're going to package the .tag files in a JAR file and store it in the lib directory beneath webinf. The tag files must be stored inside the metainf tags folder of the JAR file, making the tags more reusable. If the tags are only going to be necessary and only going to be visible within an application, then you can store any tag files directly in the tags folder beneath WebINF within your application. The standalone approach requires a TLD file be created inside the metainf folder of the JAR file. For in-application approach, a TLD file is optional. Creating a TLD file does have the advantage of using the namespace. The JSP that uses a tag does not have to know the location of the tag file. In other words, doesn't have to know the uh, tag dir attribute. They use the URI. A TLD file is mandatory if you're packaging the tag files in a jar. Of course, um, you use the tag file element instead of the tag element to register a tag. So in our tag lib directive, um, we use the tag file element instead of the tag element to register an entire tag. We still have to create the TLD file, though. Child elements of the tag file element are uh, name, which is the name of the tag. It must be the same as a tag file name without the dot tag extension. Path, this is the location of the tag file relative to the root of the jar or war. For the JSP developer to use a tag file within a JSP, use the tag lib directive to declare the namespace. If you have not created a TLD file and there's no URI, then you have to use the tag dir attribute instead of the URI attribute. So for the tag lib directive here, instead of the URI attribute, we're setting the tag dir attribute, and we're setting it to the relative path of all of our tag files and specifying our prefix. 
If you have a TLD file, then you can use the namespace URI as usual, which generally gives us a little more flexibility. Some vendor implementations do a compile time include of the tag files um, in the user JSP file. If you change the tag file, you must also update the timestamp of the user JSP file, in other words, the uh, JSP file that uses the tags, to force a recompile. Otherwise, you may not see changes in the tag file. Now let's go make this work. Let's go take a look in Eclipse at using the tag file approach to allow a JSP developer inside of a JSP using standard JSP syntax to create their own custom tags and use them. So we've been doing a pretty good job of separating responsibilities and skills, allowing Java developers to do what they do best, allowing JSP developers to do what they do best. Um, but we'd like to give a little more power to the JSP developer to handle a lot of the JSP logic for our custom tag using a tag file so that they can write it in traditional JSP syntax. So far what we've got is an employee tag um, that is doing a lot of rendering. We do uh, fragment support now and that works uh, pretty well. Um, but we're still having to handle the rendering, too much of the rendering, in my opinion, in the tag code itself. So yes, the uh, fragment code can allow the JSP developer some flexibility in how they render um, our list and add some style to it in the color red. And our TLD find file is properly configured to help our employee list tag uh, be available in the environment. But I want to give a little more power again to the um, JSP developer to create what will hopefully be um, such awesome custom tags that they'll be reused across multiple JSPs, but let the JSP developers work this out and decide for themselves. So we're going to make some changes to these key files to implement this. And we're also going to uh, have the JSP developer create a tag file and use the features of writing the custom tag in a tag file. OK, so I have a very simple tag file here. I'm just going to drag it in and we'll take a look at what it is. I'm going to drag it in and drop it into my web INF uh, folder. Notice that my JSP developer was good enough to um, organize tags into a tags folder as is recommended um, with best practices. But if I open this file, notice it's, yeah, it's a little not quite a JSP file, but we're certainly using JSP syntax here. And the first line of this file, we're setting up an attribute. We're giving it a local variable name. Um, we're setting up the type of attribute to be a, being a Java class. So I'm looking at the fully qualified name of the Java class. We're setting this attribute as required. And we're also um, indicating that this is going to be evaluated as a runtime expression value. So right here in uh, HTML or layout code, the JSP developer is using traditional JSP syntax to write out some piece of information, including a horizontal line. OK? Now, just to do a sanity check before um, we actually implement this tag, let's remind ourselves how it currently works um, so that we can see the difference. Yes, we've got um, a little bit of flexibility for the JSP developer, but we're still handling too much of what is rendering um, behavior. We're still handling too much of it in the Java code. Again, to test tags, to test tag libraries, we're not running the tag itself. We're not running a JSP. We're going to run our servlet that calls the JSP. So as a sanity check, let's just make sure that um, this works. I'm going to right click on my servlet, choose run as, run on server. And I'm watching the JBoss. 
server publish. Hopefully that's good. And I'm watching the server start up. And I see that it's working. I've got some style. I've got my red. But I want to, again, reorganize my code, review my code, change the functionality so that going forward, the JSP developer is more responsible for um, handling the fluctuate, not, not the fluctuation, but handling the flexibility of the rendering of my JSP code. Okay, so I've got it working. That's fine. I've got my tag, and we understand um, that the JSP developer is now developing this tag. I'm going to change uh, the list of employees. We're going to make several changes along the way. Um, I'm going to change list employees to use this new tag. In order to make this happen, we have to add another tag library descriptor, okay? Um, the other tag library descriptor, tag lib descriptor, uh, or tag lib directive, is going to call out to this new tag that I have in the tags subdirectory. So I can copy and paste this in, or you can watch me type, which is often like watching paint dry, so I try to avoid it whenever possible when too many people are watching me. Um, I, I'm actually pointing to the tags directory. Notice I'm using the tag dir attribute instead of the URI um, attribute because I've put my tag file in the tags folder underneath WebINF. Now, instead of this JSP attribute element that's using name snippet from the employee tag, and from uh, the TLD file, I'm going to change my JSP to use the new tag that, as I've defined it in the tag file. So one line, cleaning it up, render the employee. So notice if I paste this in, I've reduced my code, easier to read, and the JSP developer is using this employee tag to do some layout to actually figure out what it is that they want this custom tag to do. And of course, because I've externalized this into a separate file, not only is it usable in this one JSP, but it's usable across multiple JSPs. So I've proven myself that um, as a JSP developer, I can handle creating custom tags. So there's no reason not to go back and clean up the other tags that are being used by other JSPs or within this JSP. So I want to make sure and change how employee list is configured because that's still in my TLD file. The only tag in my tag file is this employee tag. Okay, why is it the only tag? Because that's actually the name of the file. That's one of the limitations is that for every tag, you're going to have a separate tag file. Okay, so in my custom TLD file, there's some modifications that I should make. First off, I'm going to take out the attribute for snippet. I'm going to take out the attribute definition for uh, name snippet. And I'm also going to change the body content from empty to scriptless. Too many S's, but let's see if we can uh, type this in correctly the first time. Uh, scriptless. Oh, I did it. Yay. OK. So what we're saying is the attribute, it, there's not going to be an attribute support anymore for the employee list tag. The body content will be scriptless. OK? And in my employee list tag, remember that um, I handled the attribute by, um, yeah, I handled the attribute by creating the fragment element. Before my manager gets over here, I should organize uh, or clean up and correct indentation, things like that in my code. Um, I've gotten. Uh, beamed in the head by uh, C programmers for that. They tell me that my code looks horrible and they can't read it. And so whenever I need their help, I have to hurry up and quickly make it look pretty so they can read it. Okay. In my Java tag, 
I'm going to remove the support that I had previously put in there for various features, okay? In my for list, in my for uh, loop, sorry, in my for loop, I'm going to simplify this. I, you know, I'm the Java developer. I shouldn't be writing out HTML code. So I can simplify this um, with just a few things. So I still want to create my employee object. But all I'm going to do is call set attribute on employee. So I'm going to remove all this other uh, code in writing out content. I'm going to uh, set attribute employee on the employee instance. OK. So now um, I've set an attribute on the JSP context, which is essentially the uh, page context. It, that's the only changes I'm making. So I'm cleaning up my uh, JSP code as well as my tag library descriptor code. So we're good. This is a very simple example, but we're changing how our applications are being developed by uh, relieving some of the rendering responsibility from the uh, Java developer and um, passing more of the rendering uh, responsibility and the flexibility to the JSP developers, which is where that information um, and where that skill set is best utilized. OK, a couple of simple changes. Let's review before we run this. Um, list employees, we're using another custom tag, but this time the custom tag is defined in a tag file, right? And the name of the tag is the name of the file, OK? And we're using JSP syntax to create and, and allow us some flexibility, which hopefully will be reused throughout our application because this is going to be the most awesome rendering ever. And we modified our custom TLD file, um, which is where we were uh, previously handling the configuration of the employee list tag. Again, that was generally done by the Java developer. So we changed the declaration of um, other tags and, and took out the attribute support. So we're not doing f uh, fragment support anymore. And we're setting this to scriptless. OK. Awesome. Let's see if it works. If I go to the server, notice it needs to be republished. And you know that Susan likes to publish separate from actually starting it up. So I will right click and publish. Make sure that's still successful. And of course, we've added elements to the web INF. We've made changes to Java code, um, in our case, the employee list tag. Um, so things need to be recompiled. And of course, we made a change to uh, list employees as well as custom TLD. So let's run our servlet, right click, run as, run on server, and see if our JSP developer is getting the rendering or getting close to the rendering that they expect. And a voila, no more red names. We get a horizontal line separating our names. So our JSP developers um, experimenting with the rendering. But they're using an employee tag. In other words, a tag file that is written in JSP syntax to write the tag and to configure the tag.